Let's be honest for a moment. When was the last time you really used your calendar for more than tracking appointments? What if I told you that Apple Calendar, yes, the one that's already sitting on your iPad, could help you time block, plan your content, and organize your week without downloading another app or paying for another subscription. In this video, I will walk you through how I'm using Apple Calendar as part of my productivity system and how you can start building a calendar setup that actually works with you instead of it watching you. First off, if everything in your life lives inside one calendar, things are going to get messy. You want separation, not chaos. So I have created custom calendars for different areas of my life and the work. I got one for content, one for client projects, one for personal appointments, even a space for just routines like reading or rest or just intentional personal time. Each one gets its own color. So for example, content planning might be purple, work might be green, personal might have a different color, admin might be a bright orange. In that way, when I open up my month or week view, I can instantly see what's getting my time without having to decode a wall of events. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually go into Apple Calendar, see what are our options in iPad OS 26 and how you can start adding and setting up your different calendars and all the things. So I'm going to tap on calendar here, right? So with iPad OS 6, there is some little more functionalities that I have been loving, all right? So when you double tap, you're going to actually get the windowing. If you open up your window and it's this small, you can simply double tap it to the right of year and it's going to bring up your full um, system. You also have your menu in options appearing to the top. And also if you have an external display attached, you can also move whatever window you have on your iPad, you can move it to that display as well. Now what I've loved with iPad OS, they have added the floating uh, menu system to the left. So when I tap on this, it actually opens up a floated menu. So this little redesign is good. So on the left, it will give you a listing of all your calendars. You also have your inbox. That would be invitations that appear from your mail app and with the use of Apple Intelligence, the inbox. And also if you have any invitations from your calendars from other users who use Apple Calendar or so it will appear in your inbox and you also have your um, listing of all your events, right? So this is just general spread of the Apple calendar. You have your year view, month view. You also have your week view and you also have your day view. Depending on what your focus, if you're like me who likes the month view to see the entire month, or you want to be a little more focused in for the week, you can also use your week view. And if you want to have even more focus by day, you can switch over to your day view. But for me, I like to look at the month view. Right? So that is more or less the overview of Apple Calendar if this is your first time getting into it. So the first thing we want to do is actually set up how do you actually add your calendar options and setting your colors and also naming your calendars. One of the important things I want you to remember is that when you're naming your calendars, you need to know the different containers or specific things that will go inside of those calendars. For example, with my calendars, I have personal business collaborations, content planning, and all the things. These are different areas that I focus on every single day as part of my work, different workflows. And so my calendars and even any app that I'm using when it comes to my helping me boost my productivity, I have designed it that they will fall into these different categories. There's some other settings that you should know about with regards to your calendar in that when you go into settings and we're going to come down to apps. 
we go to calendar this is where you can actually add additional calendars so to the top here is where you would add your calendars and so those calendars can either be gmail icloud so if i go to add account so it could be an icloud account google yahoo outlook or if you have a designated mail app and you know the actual settings to bring your mail into account and having everything in a unified area this is where you actually go let's say for example you add your gmail account you would basically turn on that you want you want that calendar to turn on you can turn on the notes mail contacts and so forth so this is where you would actually come to refine calendar settings also apple intelligence is also on all right you can say that you want to learn you want to show you also have the option to adjust different features and settings inside of your calendar like your start week and so forth because i heavily use apple calendar i want to make sure that any event or anything that i'm putting on the calendar it's going to show up in a default calendar so if i tap here I can state which of the calendar by default business is selected. So any event that I add, it's going to go in under the business calendar. If I have to go in and change it where I say, well, okay, it needs to be content or so I would then switch it out. So those are the settings, like the initial setup of the calendar that you would you put in so you can start using the app. Okay, so if I want to add a calendar or multiple calendars to my iCloud account because I want it to sync across all the devices that I'm using with the one Apple ID, I am going to hit on add calendar and then to the bottom here, I'm going to choose add calendar again. And then I'm going to put in a name in this case because I already have content planning and all the things. I think for this one, I'm going to put in admin. I make sure that my account is selected to iCloud. If you want, you can actually share with someone else who has an Apple account. So you can have, if you have a collaboration where you and multiple people work, you can add them to your calendar. We are going to change the color. I'm going to choose a custom color. And then I'm going to ensure that event alerts is turned on. And notice the admin has been added there. Now, if there's a case where I need to make any changes, I'm going to simply tap on I and it's going to open up back that same window. I can also make that calendar uh, public, especially if I want to share my calendar with team members and so forth. All right, where they can just read only, but they can make changes to the calendar. All right, so that is how you actually create your calendars. Now, when I create events, I'm not just dropping in a title and hoping I remember what it's for. You can add location, notes, links, and even alerts. This is especially helpful when I'm planning a recording day or a collaboration. I can drop in the video brief, link it to my notes, and even set a reminder for to prep the day before. And because Apple Calendar integrates seamlessly with Apple Reminders, you can actually bring your task list into your calendar and schedule it. So if I wanted to add an event to the top right, I can simply tap on the plus sign and it's going to allow me to actually add an event or I can actually add a reminder and this reminder would actually be reflected in the reminders. App. So with an event, let's say for example, I want to have a sample meeting i can choose the location or i can actually put in if it's a zoom link or a google meet link i can put it in here i can also put in the start and end date so let's say for example i schedule this out for tuesday at maybe 9 a.m all right i know my time zone all right um, if it's a case where you have to travel somewhere, then you can include your travel time. You can state if this is actually repeatable. So a lot of times when I add events into my calendar, I'm being very intentional, especially if, if, 
It's events or activities that repeat every single week. I make them recurring events, right? I would state if it's every day, every week, every two weeks, every month, or I can also do a custom date, right? So I can also choose which calendar I want this to go under. If it's an admin task or admin event, if it's relating to content, if there's any invitees, I can also add those invitees, right? And then I will tap on done. And notice that a color actually comes in. So once I see that color next to it, I know exactly what that actually means. Now, if you notice for every week on Mondays, I have CEO days because this is my admin days in my business where I focus strictly on business. And so this is a event that recurs repeatedly and I want, I wanted it to be on my calendar. It's a part of my workflow. So if I needed to make changes to this, I can simply tap notice it gives me that it's in the business calendar and this repeats every week. It never ends. It relates to the business calendar. And I usually want to be reminded one day before, all right, or I can choose an hour before. And so I put in my notes as to what it is I'm actually doing. And this changes out every so often, all right? This also syncs with another app that I use as well. So here is how I actually use it. Every Sunday, I'll sit down and block out my week. I start with my non-negotiables, whether that's meetings, appointments, and family time. Then I block time for focus work, whether it's content creation, strategy, or writing. I even schedule in breaks and no meeting zones. This way, my week has structure before it gets filled with distractions. And I can look at my calendar and know this time is protected for deep work. This time is for admin. This time is for me. This is how you go from reacting to your week to actually leading it. Okay, so let me give you an example of what a typical spread actually looks like when I'm fully using Apple Calendar. So I'm going to actually go back to the month of March. And this is what my calendar actually looked like in the month of March. Okay, so this is what a typical time blocking actually looks like for me in regards to when it comes to lit doing time blocking. So I have my personal time from 5 to 8 a.m. Depending on what I have going on that week or that day, I if I have an entire um, time schedule to recording content that entire week or that entire day, I am an early morning person, so I start recording at 6 a.m. sometimes, 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. So depending on how that day will actually start as when I would record. So I had that, I had my personal time, which was recurring every single day. I had time to record from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. From 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., I took a break. Then I had some client work to do. And then I took a break from 1 to 2 p.m. So this is a typical example of time blocking. Notice the same thing goes here. If I go back a week, notice I have recording, I have an all day event because I know that this event is taking place from the 17th to the 21st for that entire week. All right. And so it's inside of my calendar called content recording because I batch record content. So that entire week, every single day, I'm actually recording a piece of content. So this is what a typical day would look like if there's a space between different events. I know ex for sure that I'm either doing something where I'm not working or this is more or less my free time. So this is what a typical time blocking actually looks like. And I'm being very intentional and I know exactly what I'm doing every single day or every hour of the day. So I can maximize my time. If you're using Apple Reminders, you can pair it with Calendar for even more clarity and execution. With iPad OS 18, you can use your split view and even the stage manager view to work with the Apple Reminders and Apple Calendar at the same time. On iPad OS 26, you can now use the windowing system 
where you can actually work with them side by side. I can have a task inside of Reminders and I can actually drag it into Apple Calendar. So let me show you how this is done, right? So I'm gonna come back into Calendar to the bottom right where you have that little circle here, uh, sizing handle more or less. I am going to size, I'm gonna bring this down, right? I may want it like this and move it over here. And then I want to bring in reminders, right? And I can size this as well. And this is my maximize my day layout, all right? Don't worry, I have a tutorial coming on how you can set this up. So here I have it side by side. Now let's say for example, I have my CEO days on Monday and I want to finalize um, important documents, whether it's to review my QuickBook records or so forth. And this is where I can actually tap the I and I can actually put in a date and time when I need certain tasks to be completed. All right, so let's say this is a task that I may want to complete today. I can simply drag it and I can state what time I want it to actually go into. So I would say 9.30 and I would just drop that there. And notice it's appearing there as well. Right, so I actually took it off of my reminders list and I actually put it onto my calendar in order for me to actually execute it. Now, from the app of reminders, I can also go here and I can turn on the date. So I can say today's date and I can also say at 9 a.m. And notice it's going to appear differently in the calendar, right? So I dragged it out of um, reminders because I remind I have my remind, I use Apple Reminders as a task manager so I can be accountable to executing the things that I need to get done. But if I want to execute and actually make it an actionable task, then I drag it over into my um, calendar. If I need to add a date directly from reminders, it's going to appear over here as a with a circle. And it's also going to give me the option to show in reminders. This helps me schedule when I'll actually do the work and not just plan it. It's a small thing, but that drag and drop creates a mental shift. You're not just listing your tasks. You're giving them a home on your calendar to execute them and bring it to life. Now here is what I want you to notice. This isn't just about putting dots on a screen or having color coded time blocks. This system works because each part has its place. Calendar shows me where my time is going. Reminders tell me what needs to happen. And I use these every single day as part of my daily workflow. Together they give me structure, and flexibility. So here is your next step. Open Apple Calendar and create your custom calendars and start blocking out your time. Even if it's just for the next two days, I want you to try it, live in it for a week, and come back and tell me in the comments what has changed for you. Did you feel more organized, more productive, or more focused? If this helped you rethink how you could use your iPad and Apple Calendar, check out this video on how you can integrate your Apple productivity apps if you haven't already. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next one. And if you know someone who's always double booked or overwhelmed, send this to them and let's build systems that work using tools we already have. Remember, your tech should be working for you and not the other way around. See you in the next video.